Hi everybody, um, welcome to uh, deploying a Yugabyte DB cluster in Kubernetes. Uh, Yugabyte is a cloud native database. It's transactional, high performant, and built for cloud native environments. And Kubernetes is pretty is a pretty popular cloud native environment. Uh, we're going to go in this video. We're going to look at how to deploy a Yugabyte DB cluster natively in Kubernetes stateful sets using Helm charts. Okay, to start with, I am on the docs page of Yugabyte, so docs.yugabyte.com. You simply go to the deploy section, to Kubernetes, and then to help charts. Okay, so we're gonna follow this document page for the purposes of this video. All right, there are a few things that you need to have already done, and for the interest of time, I already have done them. Um, so the first thing is I have installed Helm and you need a uh, the version 2.8 minimally. I have version 2.9. I also have created a Kubernetes cluster, in my case on GKE, but you can create your Kubernetes cluster on any provider. So this is a three node Kubernetes cluster, but you could have it of any size because Kubernetes will take care of the scheduling for you. Okay, so let's jump right in. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is create, is to fetch the Helm charts. So we just run the, so we get the Helm chart repo and you will find that the Yugabyte Helm chart is present in here. Uh, there's a couple of helper utilities. The first thing will help you create a role-based access so that you can you, you can interact with the Kubernetes cluster as a user that has enough privileges. Uh, I have already created this, but for the first time, it would create a Yugabyte Helm user. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to do is Helm init, um, and we're going to make sure that Helm is ready to run. And what we find is that Helm has been upgraded and we are now ready to start deploying Yugabyte using Helm. Okay, the actual deployment is extremely simple. All you need to do is install the Yugabyte package to a namespace. So all you need to do is type in helm install Yugabyte, give it a namespace name, give a name to your deployment, and we wait for the installation to succeed. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and take a couple of minutes and spin something up. So its status is deployed. We just deployed into the YB demo namespace. Okay. You can check, um, so if you are running in environments that have very little memory or are resource constrained in terms of CPU, you might have to run the command below, but since I am not and I'm running on a GKE cluster, I'm going to skip that command. Here are some instructions to get PostgreSQL running on Kubernetes, which we're gonna skip for the purposes of this demo. Okay, you can check what we just did in terms of the Helm deployment by running uh, Helm status and it says that its status is deployed. It has a YB master service, a UI, and a T server service, and it has two stateful sets, the master and the tablet server. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and use kubectl to actually look at the pods that we just deployed. So what you find is, there, is there are three YB masters and there are three YB tablet servers, right? So the three masters represent that um, you have a three-way replicated system, so the replication factor is three. The three tablet servers represent the fact that there are three pods or nodes in the system, which actually do the I.O. Um, now, let's do the next thing. Let's actually open up the master UI to take a look at the Yugabyte cluster itself. You can do that by getting the services in the YB demo namespace, and what we find is the master UI is exposed via that IP address, so I'm just gonna, and note that this is on the port 7000, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that page up, and what you find is that there are three masters here, uh, there are three nodes or pods in the system, its replication factor is three, and we can head over to the tablet servers page to actually verify that there are three tablet servers. All right, so let's keep going. Well, the next thing you can do with a Helm chart is to figure out what is the history or the sequence of actions that has been performed in this cluster. Obviously, in the case of this cluster, the only thing that we have done is to have installed the cluster, and that's what it shows us. Now, you could do a number of things here. Um, 
the default values for this cluster have two cores of CPU for the masters and two cores of CPU for the tablet servers. Now, how do we figure that out, right? So you can type in a kubectl um, describe pods in the YB demo namespace. All right, and I'm going to describe the YB master zero pod. And what that shows me is that that's the command that we're running inside the pod. And there is a two core and two gigs of RAM limit, minimum and maximum. So it'll run with two cores and two gigs of RAM. Now, I could do the same thing for the T server. And what we find here is that it also is limited to two cores, but it uses four gigs of RAM, okay? All of this can be changed on the fly by simply setting the number of uh, T server, CPU, the master CPU, so on and so forth. So you could set it differently to achieve a different uh, size or, or power of cluster. So you could give it more resources. Now, you, it's pretty easy to scale up a cluster. So in this case, we have a three node cluster and we looked at the three tablet servers that we're running. We're simply going to run a scale uh, command in order to, we're going to set the number of T server replicas to five in order to make this a five node cluster. So let's go ahead and run that. And what you find is that it's gone ahead and made the changes. Now we can go ahead and get the pods by running this command. And what you find is that the new tablet servers are getting created. Okay. So if we give it a couple of minutes, we'll find that the pods will actually get to the running state. So at this point, you have a five node cluster. And if you had a workload running at this point, it would automatically scale out to five nodes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the UI shows. So we find that the two extra nodes have gotten added and we just scaled out the cluster using a Helm chart. All right, so let's keep going further. Um, we can actually expose the different services as, as load balancers. Recall that in this case, we have not done so. So there are, there is a headless service for YV masters, there is a headless service for the T servers, and there is a load balancer for the master UI. We have not exposed uh, any of the services to the external world using a load balancer, but if your deployment is such that your apps run in a, in a different environment and not in Kubernetes, then you can expose it using a load balancer. If your applications are natively deployed inside Kubernetes, then you can just use the headless service C name in order to discover the cluster. Uh, you can very easily do an upgrade on the cluster as well. Uh, all you need to do is type in uh, Helm upgrade and give it an image tag and you should be able to go ahead and perform the upgrade. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do the upgrade at the moment, um, but let's finally delete the cluster in order to clean up and free the resources. Well, the first thing that you need to do is to purge the Helm chart itself. So all you do is Helm delete and you give it the name of the deployment that we just did. It's going to take again a couple of minutes in order to do the delete. And remember that this delete will not delete your persistent volume claims. So your data is still protected in spite of this delete. It's still retained. If you want to do to purge the data as well, make sure to delete the PVCs in that namespace that were created. And doing so would actually remove everything. Um, we can verify this delete by checking the pods in all the namespaces and we find that the our namespace YB demo is no longer present. And we could do the same thing with the and we found we find that there are no PVCs either. So we have completely cleaned up this demo. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. That's all we had. Happy helming.